Hi, we're Paul and Cindy Karras. We have three kids, ages 24, 22, and 20. We've been asked to share a few tips about sending our kids to college. By no means are we experts, but we're continuing to learn from our mistakes. Yeah. How did you prepare your kids for college life in the weeks leading up to their first semester? It's actually not just the weeks leading up. You have to trust that whatever you have taught your children for many years is in them and it's in their soul, it's in their hearts, it's in their minds. And that's an important thing because that will go with them to college. But there are a few things, huh? That you can yeah, do. make sure they have an Orthodox study Bible. They have an icon for their room, a prayer book. There's a really great new app called The Encounter, with daily Orthodox prayers. Some of those things that they're gonna really come in handy as they're trying to set up their own kind of lifestyle and really to encourage them to really focus on some daily prayer. If you haven't found a church yet, um, don't find it for them. Have them sit down with you and get on the internet. You can look at so many different locations to find a church, but do that with them. So it's not like you're doing that for them. Um, and then t place a call to the priest uh, before they leave and just make a connection and, and uh, find out if kids are coming back and forth to church, if there's somebody who will pick up, uh, even offer your child that you'll pay an Uber for them to go to church. It's always really nice when there is a group of people who can surround them at the local church community. The second question is, any advice for parents on managing the tension between letting your kids be adults and being present as their parents? And it is the time to start to uh, really do what St. Porphyrius talks about in the book Wounded by Love, where he, he talks about as the kids grow older to, to pray for them more than you talk to them. And so this is really a time to begin to pray uh, for your kids. I would suggest trying to keep your advice to a bare minimum uh, because they really just need a safe place to come talk and to process. And if we jump into advice mode, which we have been very guilty of over the years, if we do that right away, the kids tend to shut down. Older kids, college age kids and above, they view advice as criticism, even though we're not trying to criticize, that's how they read it. I think it's really important those first couple weeks to really let them be let them dictate when they're gonna call home. We tried really hard to allow them to feel like they were in control of that. And um, more often than not, they did get in touch with us and try and ask them questions versus, you know, like, are you doing your homework? And are you, you know, are you eating good meals or whatever? You know, ask them to just tell you a little bit about it we need to really sort of change our mindset into helping them be adults. And, and part of that is really letting them know how much you trust them. And trust not just in their moral behavior, but also just in their ability to manage their schedule, their ability to you know get done the homework that has to get done. I would just you know urge you to just let them know you trust them. And, uh, and, and if they have to fail a little bit, it's okay. You know, let them, let them kind of find their way because they're, they're, then they are going to own it and I think that that can be a much more healthy uh, experience. As they do call, ask them if they'd like advice rather than just give the advice. Really, to be truthful, when my oldest left, I kind of thought parenting was over, like my job was done. And I, I actually felt really sad. And I kept thinking about all the things I wished I would have done. And the reality was by the time Thanksgiving came, it became really obvious I was still going to be the mom and <laughs> they still needed me. And um, I have a feeling now that they're even out of college, uh, that continues. So listen to their voice. You know, I, I happen to be a, a person that's uh, blind, so I can't see much. So I use my ears a lot, but hear your kid's tone. And when they call from college, if it's got that inner energy, uh, you can hear that inner excitement. Things are great. If they start to feel real withdrawn or uh, very quiet or maybe moody, then just maybe ask some gentle questions and see if they feel like opening up. Maybe there is something going on that they're stressed about or anxious about, or maybe something's going on on the dorm floor um, that you know they don't know how to quite process. Whatever they come out with, really trying to hold your shock because you might hear some things that are shocking, uh, and just react very calmly and ask more questions and uh, create that safe place that they can, that they can talk to. And then at the right time, if, if, if it's the right thing, you can give a little advice.
you know, as they go away to college, they are going to encounter things that they've maybe never seen before. And just that, you know, to let them know that you're always there, uh, that you're a safe place if they ever want to process things to call you. If they do do that, uh, a key thing for you is to not, you know, get overly shocked and just kind of be a safe place that they can You go. can keep that overly shocked for another time with your spouse. I remember when our oldest came home and said, you know, I was not surprised about the drinking or even the drugs, but the casual sex. In my head, I was like, oh my gosh. But I tried to be really calm, like, how are you processing that? And, you know, how are you doing with that? You know, ask some questions about what that looks like and, and be calm. They're going to be meeting a whole spectrum of kids on a complete, diff you know, everybody's got different beliefs and they're coming from different places. Uh, to actually not be afraid of that, uh, it's a little scary at first. You're wondering if you're going to find anybody that you connect with. Um, to really try and find some people that have some similar beliefs and not to reject those who don't have the same beliefs, that this is a way that they can show love. But if they're going to select good friends to really try and identify people who think the way they think and believe what they believe. Kind of this idea that as Orthodox Christians, that this could be part of the talk before they go, is you know that we're called to love everybody. Uh, even, you know, people that may be doing wild, crazy things, we're called to love all of them. Uh, now, who we make our close friends and kind of our inner circle and who we really grow closest to and spend the most time with, that should be for a group of friends that we identify over time that, you know, really you you have common values or a common outlook on life. And that, that then allows them to realize that they, they don't have to judge people, they should, but yet we know what's right and wrong. And the people that we get the closest to are those that, you know, we're kind to everybody, but we get closest to the people that we can grow with. Have you seen your OCF impact your kids? I asked mm. my daughter this question last night. She said, how about changed my life? We have found that OCF was a really, really important part of our kids' college life. They all went to the same school and they did have an OCF. When our first started, it was very small, yet it was still really a, a very homey, wonderful thing for our son to do. It's just a very safe haven. That same college now has grown and they have attendance anywhere between 25 and 40 kids. If your college doesn't have one, uh, ask around and see if any of the surrounding colleges, um, our kids go, went to the University of Minnesota and their location um, actually feeds a couple other small colleges in the neighborhood or in the area. If your college doesn't have an OCF and there aren't any nearby OCFs, see if your child is willing to see if they could start an OCF. And uh, that's, another, that's another option too. OCF tends to have a fall retreat, a spring retreat. In the winter between Christmas and New Year's, they have what are called the college conferences. Uh, I think our kids would, would say that these retreats were li literally game changers because they got to meet kids from around the region that they live, from multiple different colleges to see that, hey, we're in this together. They had great speakers, they had you know, uh, ethnic dances at night. Uh, they had um, you know, just time for you know, discussions. So this was, these retreats, the OCF retreats are really, really powerful. Life-giving. Yeah. In fact, I think our kids would say that um, it was just so like a oasis to get to one of these retreats and find kids who thought the same way they did, that, you know, believed what they believed. And it was like rejuvenating. Uh, one of our kids did a, a real break instead of going on spring break. He went on a trip to Romania. And so look into OCF and find out what they're offering and do that with your kids because once again, if you're doing it for them, they may not be as interested. I think the hardest thing about sending your kid away to college is us, the parents. I mean, yeah. <laughs> our kids our own did just fine, yeah, but we are the ones. So yeah. um, we encourage you, and this is maybe a new thing that you've done. Maybe you've done this throughout your whole kid's life. We are just doing it more now as we have adult kids, but, but pray together for them. There's a wonderful uh, Akathis to the Mother of God. It's called 
Akathis to the mother of God, nurturer of children. It's awesome. It's really a sweet thing. Or just do some prayer on your own for your kids. Um, and give them to Christ. He'll take care of them. Yep, exactly. And enjoy. It's so fun. Really enjoy. It'll be over before you blink. <laughs>